This is the Pixel 6 Pro. I'm betting you already knew that, and the reason you came here was because you need a little help in deciding whether the Pixel Pro was right for you, despite all of the negative things being said about it. To be frank, I think this is the best phone on the market right now, despite all of its shortcomings, but that doesn't mean that it's worth $900 to me, you, or even Marquez Brown. Um, my Pixel 6 Pro has slowly gotten so buggy since launch in October that I can no longer recommend it at $900. See, the Pixel 6 Pro has been getting a lot of negative reviews, and I find those thoughts and opinions to be justified. The Pixel 6 Pro is the first Android phone to run the latest version of Android, and it is having a negative impact on the Pixel experience, but that doesn't mean that it's not worth it either. As you can see, I have a lot of experience dealing with Pixel phones, even before they were branded as Pixels. The last two years have left me underwhelmed and really disappointed with the entire Pixel lineup, so I decided not to get them because it just wasn't worth it. Fast forward to the latest Pixel 6 Pro, and it's fair to say that I've had my eyes on this bad boy, but I did struggle to pull the trigger on buying it myself. Because of my financial situation, I couldn't justify getting the Pixel 6 Pro or any other phone as much as I love upgrading every single year. Fortunately, this past week was my birthday and my awesome family and my loving girlfriend got me the Pixel 6 Pro as a gift and I've been using the phone for over a week now. My first impression, well, I think this is the best phone on the market. I should have gotten it sooner. When Google released the Pixel 6 Pro, it came with some unique features that were unmatched compared to other phones, including Samsung and the iPhone. Specifically, there's four reasons that make me want to recommend this phone, despite all of the bad reviews that have been coming in about it. In fact, I think that this phone is the best phone for content creators, students, or anyone who dabbles in the audio, video, or editing space. That includes anyone who loves video, or people who love posting the pixel perfect picture, or people who need a way to organize audio information in a way that's searchable. That's my favorite part. So despite the fact that the fingerprint reader isn't nearly as good as my S20 Ultra, or that people are having to factory reset their Pixel phones to fix their fingerprint scanner, or that the phone just generally chokes up on people, I'm still going to recommend the Pixel 6 Pro, and here's four major reasons why none of those things I just said matter. Reason number one is that most of these issues are software issues and since Google is a software company, I trust them. Google has already committed to fixing them. The week I got my phone, there was already a fix for most of the issues that the top tech YouTubers brought up as to why they couldn't recommend the Pixel 6 Pro. Now that doesn't mean that it will be a perfect fix or that the fix might not introduce new bugs, but I am willing to recommend something if I have faith that the company behind the product will come and fix it. Seeing as how Google's a software company and that the Pixel 6 Pro is the first phone to run the latest Android version, it kind of makes sense that there might be some software bugs, even though these bugs are pretty serious. But this is even true of iPhones. It's basically causing someone's phone to stop working completely almost. This has got to be one of the worst bugs in Apple's history. But not all the issues would be fixable with a software update. For example, the fingerprint reader speed is probably a hardware issue that I don't expect a fix for for the life of the device. It's a flaw that I've decided to accept because of the killer features that no other Android phone has right now. And that leads us to reason number two. So reason number two why I would still recommend this phone despite its shortcomings is the video camera, right? For years, I've been waiting for someone to make an Android phone that comes close to the quality of an iPhone. And I personally think that the Pixel 6 Pro is that phone. Now, if you haven't noticed already, I've been filming this entire video on my Pixel 6 Pro. What you're looking at is 4K footage, downscaled to 1080, and it looks pretty sharp. For uh, contrast and comparison, I'm now gonna use my DSLR for the rest of the video. When I first started making videos, I tried to use my Galaxy S20 Ultra, and I just wasn't happy with the video quality, even though it was the best Android had to offer at the time. And while it's still not better than the DSLR, the Tensor chip helps with computational photography, and that leads to stellar quality when paired with good hardware. There's a popular saying that the best camera to use is the one you have with you, and there's definitely going to be situations where something crazy might be going on, and I won't have my DSLR with me, but I will have my Pixel 6 Pro. So I'm pretty excited to finally have a phone with dope video recording capabilities that isn't an iPhone because I am not a fan of Apple at all. So I'm happy, this makes me happy. Mama, we made it. Reason number three. This one is for all of you who are looking for that pixel perfect picture and I think it's best to do a live demonstration. We got some tassels that I wanna get out the picture. All right, that first swipe didn't do it. Second swipe got a little more. We'll do it again. And it figures it out. See how I over 
estimated where it should have been. So now the tassels are gone. But the problem is we still have some shadow down here that, you know, doesn't look natural. So with the tassels gone, Google knows what to do with the shadow and how the shadow should look based off of where the light source is coming from. That's some pretty dope stuff. Now we go over here to where the controller is. I think we need some dead space to show separation from the controller and the tree. So we'll just swipe there and it removes it. Now it's not perfect and it will learn as the machine learning algorithm gets better and the tensor chip is doing more of these photos, it will get better. Reason number four, this one is my favorite. The tensor chip in the Pixel 6 Pro lets you record audio and transcribe that audio in real time. This too is best understood with the live demonstration. Here's a question. Why would people call an audio recording app game-changing in a different league and the best app of the year? Not best audio recording app, the best app. Maybe because it does a whole lot more than just record. It can transcribe in real time so you can see every word being said. Even hard words like Worcestershire sauce and fast words like how much wood would a woodchuck chuck of a woodchuck could chuck wood. And kind of confusing words like I ate eight plates of cake. It can recognize sounds you record like music, dogs, and didgeridoos. You can search all that stuff instantly to find the exact part you're looking for. And now you can edit your recordings the same way you edit words in a doc. Just highlight a sentence and boom, you're an audio editor. A frog. And you can share those clips easily by making videos with a waveform and transcript baked in. Just like this. Ready to share in all the places you like to share stuff. And it does all of this minus the sharing part without an internet connection. In case you missed it, without an internet connection, which means it all stays on your phone and it's all controlled by you. Not bad for a recording app. The real world use application for this is immense. It could be used with podcasters, students, the people who have to sit in courtrooms and type everything everyone has to say, and pretty much anyone who does any type of script writing who would rather say their script instead of writing them. You can even let a speech play, have your phone transcribe that speech so you can have the text version of it too. It's pretty dope. It's just too bad that these features are being overshadowed by what I consider to be mostly temporary problems that I trust Google to fix.